Hello there, Better Pickleball community. You have the right video. This is Tony from Into Pickle. I am guest hosting on CJ's video this week. This video is the second part of a webinar that CJ and I did recently about the reducing errors when you play pickleball. As we all know, pickleball is a game of errors. In this video, we're gonna share with you a couple of tips to help you reduce your errors. The webinar is part of a series that CJ and I put together as part of VI Pickleball. VI Pickleball is an online learning community that CJ and I have put together to try and help pickleball players of all levels improve their game. You can find out more about the VI Pickleball community at wearepickleball.com. CJ and I will see you there. In this video, CJ and I are gonna show you who your real enemy is on the court, and we're also gonna give you some tips so you can avoid needless errors out of bounds. For more information about VI Pickleball, check out wearepickleball.com. You're gonna to wanna to be a part of this community. Welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about the top secrets to winning more pickleball points. Tony and I want to help you learn how to play better pickleball by making the ultimate shift from somebody who struggles with strategy and performance to a player who instinctively and confidently executes on the pickleball court. So, Tony, why don't you take them through the agenda and what we're going to be talking about today? Actually, today's uh, I, I really like this webinar. And when CJ and I put it together, we kind of this is a really uh, this is kind of a brainy webinar and we're going to be talking about concepts and we're trying to basically change your, the way you think about the game, right? So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about not losing versus winning. It sounds like an easy concept and it's not, people misunderstand that all the time. We're going to talk about the net. The net is your number one enemy, as we'll talk about. It's your number one adversary on the court. And then we're going to talk about focusing on where you should hit most of your shots. As a player myself, I win most of my, my putaways in the middle. So we're going to share that with you guys so you guys can bring that into your game uh, and, uh, and hopefully reduce your errors and improve your results. And so this is our second series in our series of four webinars we're doing to introduce you to how we work together and the concept that we put together, hopefully, to help you improve. Because what we want to think, we, what we want you to think about is this. I want you to imagine what it would feel like to cut through the clutter and know exactly how you're going to improve your pickleball game. Because that's our goal for you. And pickleball is a game of errors, right? And, and you know, think about how pickleball points would end. Most pickleball points end don't be, don't end because of this fantastic winner. They end because of an error. Somebody hits it into the net. Somebody pops it up. Somebody hits it wide. Now, if there's a way for you to reduce errors, that's going to improve your pickleball game. But it's not just about reducing the error. It's picking areas of the game where you can reduce the margins of errors. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. The next thing is, is to remember this. We all make mistakes. We are all going to make mistakes. And this is not saying we're going to stop you from making mistakes. That's silly. That happens. The best in the world make mistakes. What we are talking about today is um, increasing those margins of errors, helping you to understand where they are so that you eventually will make less mistakes. And frankly, that's kind of how we set up the whole framework inside VI uh, Pickleball is it's teaching you the techniques and the concepts um, to help you to reduce some of those errors, to learn what you're doing. That way you're going to win more rallies. If you win more rallies, you win more games. And if you win more games, you just might have more fun. Let's get into number two, Tony. So why don't, why don't you start, why don't you start this one out if you would, please? Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about uh, the net. Okay. So the net is, is by far, by far, by far, by far, your unbeatable opponent. It's an unbeatable opponent, right? So when you step out on the, on the pickleball court, right? Next time you go out there, I want you guys to take just one second and you're going to look across real quick, right? And you're going to say, okay, I'm playing them, right? You're going to hope, hopefully you have a little self-reflection too. And that'll be in the bonus tip later, CJ. So basically, or the bonus thing we have going on. So basically a little bit of self-reflection, like, like um, I'm myself, I'm you know, be your own enemy, right? But you have one enemy on the court that you absolutely, no matter what you do, you cannot beat that enemy if you engage with that enemy. And that's the net. No matter what you do, if you, take, if you say, I'm gonna play you net, you will lose every time. Every rally will be done, right? So, you know, and, and I call him like the, the reigning undefeated pickle jump, big ball champion of the world, the net, right? Simone Jardine can't beat it, Ben Johns can't beat it, nobody can beat it, right? So think about it this way, right? If, if you hit the net, right? The rally's over, there's nothing left to do, and there's nothing left to think about, right? And, and it, it, it rallies over, not in your favor, right? 
And, but there's a, there's a, a second, maybe a little more subtle thing that happens that I want you to think about, because I want you to really understand that when you hit the net, right, you take away your opponent's uh, ability to make an error, right? If you hit the ball 22 feet out, right, it's going to go into another zip code, right? Okay, not great, but how many times has your opponent hit that ball, right? So it doesn't, you, you don't, the out ball doesn't happen, right? If you hit the net, there is absolutely nothing that they can do to help you out. There's no error they can make because you, you completed the whole thing, right? So, and, and this is super rough, right? Super rough math. But, you know, if you think about the game as being like finishing one of three ways, right? So basically, let's say like, you know, they beat you, right? So your, your opponents hit this amazing shot or a smash that's just too hard. Okay, that's one possibility, right? Uh, the other possibility is you hit the ball out, right? I'm talking about uh, the three ways that you could lose a rally. You hit the ball out, wide or deep, right? Or the third is you hit the net. Now, imagine your game if you could simply remove the net, right? So you're still going to hit balls wide and long, and we'll talk about wide in a second, right? We'll try and reduce that some, but you, out's still going to happen. That's just, you know, I can't make everybody not hit balls out. It happens, right? Um, and your opponents are going to hit awesome shots sometimes. They're going to do ATPs. They're going to do whatever they do. They're going to do crazy stuff, right? But that net, that net's got nothing to say. It's only, it's always sitting there at 34 inches in the middle, 36 on the side. It doesn't move up and down. It's just kind of like, I'm here. You can avoid me if you want to. So just imagine, right, what, how different your game would be if every time you went out there, you reduced the net by, say, like 5% every time. It'd be amazing, right? And so, you know, that's one of the things that, that as CJ mentioned earlier, you know, when we put the VIP pickleball uh, package together, right, what we're trying to do is, is we work on, like, strategies specifically to incorporate, the, you know, error reductions, including things like respecting the net. Uh, and, and trust me, you, you respect the net a little bit more, give yourself a little more margin, like we're going to talk about in a second, and your game will improve. And not a little bit. It'll improve dramatically if you do that. Okay, so Tony is going to queue up a little bit of video, and I'm going to really just share three thoughts to keep in mind as you're watching this video. What do we do to take the net out of play? All right, so the number one, the first thing, and we saw this a little bit in the first series of videos too, was stop attacking balls that are underneath the net right? Wait for the ball to set up just a little bit higher and attack that shot, okay? That's number one. Number two, again, think back to that first series of videos that we saw. Give yourself a little bit more margin of error where the net is concerned. So, you know, this is specifically talking about serves, return of serves, your third shot drops, and our dink shots. I mean, think again, think back to those videos. What did you see in those videos? Not much margin of error over the shot, and we're going to take a little deeper look at that. And then the third thing is to attack when you get closer to the net. When there's less distance between you and the net, it's going to be easier to clear the net. So, Tony, have you got that video all queued up now? You know I do, CJ. That's all right. We do. Okay. We don't Bring mess that video around up. Here. Talk to me. Visible? If it's visible. You go right ahead. We're going to roll it. We're rolling it. All right. So, there. Uh, look, look like a slide there. That is the real enemy right there. That's the enemy at the gates or the enemy at the net, we'll call it. All right. Here we go. Great movie. If you haven't seen it, write it down. All right. Here we go. So, here we're going to look at. Um, uh, our, our orange and blue teams again. Let's take a look and see what happens here. A little short return there. Oh, no. All right, so if you were here on the first webinar, that's why I put this one in here, CJ. If you were here for webinar one, you will know that right here, golden opportunity missed, right? Serve team on the other side, orange. Blue team on this side. D hard serve pushes the, the, bl the blue player back a little bit. Short return. Look at that, Mwah, look at the opportunity. It's a point ready to happen, right? But what do I do? I hit that 36 inch part of the net, right? Oh no, right? So what happens there is you, you, you take, and, and look, at, look at the lady, the, the, the player in blue. She's like, no, I'm in trouble. Oh, hit the net, thank you. So, right, so she didn't have a chance to hit, to make a mistake, to pop it up or nothing because the ball hit the net, right? So really, really costly area. It, it, every time you hit the net, it's just so costly. All right, let's take a look at another one here. But the, uh, Rick's a really nice guy, so Rick's probably like, good. You know, so everything's good. Rick's, Rick's like the nicest guy, always smiling. I want to be like Rick one day. All right, let's take a look here. What do we have here? We got a little, all right, let's speed it up a little bit. Here we go, all right. I like the serve there. I like that. Good clearances. So far, so good. Okay, we got some good clearances here. What's going to happen here? Oh, I think I know what happens here. Well, look at that. 
And then, oh, no bueno. All right, let's take a look at that, right? So the same shot twice. That's why I like this rally, right? It gives us an opportunity to look at the same shot twice. So pulled wide, right? Lift. See that paddle? See that paddle gets under it, right? And then under and up, under and up. And look at, look at the clearance, right? It looks bad. It's high, right? But it's not deep, right? So can be attacked. Beautiful shot clearing the net. I want to really, that's like, I don't know, that's like four, four feet over the net, right? I'm like four or five feet over the net. Beautiful, right? Doesn't have to be that high, but good, good margin, right? Next shot, same shot. This time, instead of doing that, basically she does like a flick shot, right? Brings the paddle like this, close. That brings the net into play. No bueno. End of rally, okay? I would rather, and let me stop here for a second. I would rather let my opponents smash the ball at me than me hit the net. Because if my, my opponent smashed the ball at me, there's a percentage chance that they're going to miss it and a percentage chance that I can still defend it. There's all sorts of things can happen. If I hit the net, 0% chance I can do anything, 100% chance that, that, that that's over. All right, let's see. There's another, okay, there's another rally here, I think. Yep. That's your favorite, that's CJ's favorite shot. I got to note it for <laughs> CJ loves this little dump shot. Look at that. Oh, CJ, this is like textbook, right? You want that's this textbook. You, want, uh -huh. you want this video. Yeah, you do. Uh -huh. All right, watch this. Watch this. So, so clearing the net. What we're going to see here is we're going to see uh, Sheila's the, the name of the player right now. No! Right to the top of the net, right? And this one is cool. Is this game we get to see the exact same shot? Go clear the net. So look at this, right? Nothing can happen right there. Point over. Not respecting the net. Let's see what happens this time. Wait a minute. Doesn't it look like the same video? Looks like the same video to me. Same shot. Everything's the same, right? Net. No net, right? Good, nice. What do we always say, CJ? That's like a, a, a paddle laying down or kind of like, like this, right? So, yeah, uh -huh. good stuff. Look at that, right? So, she's there still playing. So, I put them a little side by side. So, this is – CJ and I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek, right? Sneak a peeker about the VI Pickleball modules we're going to be doing. This is what you're looking at, right? So, you're looking at basically what we're going to be doing, side-by-side -side stuff, right? We're going to be showing you the margin for error, what not enough clearance looks like. We're going to be working through it you know, like a step-by-step -step like this. So you can really, we want, we want you guys to really be able to see, right? Look at, so you look on the left, right? You see the arm is extended from the body, right? The one on the right, the arm gets jammed up. So you start understanding how the mechanics break down, right? When you bring that arm into your body, usually your mechanics are going to be unsound. When you have your arm extended away from your body, not like rigid, but extended nice and loose away from your body, you're going to have better mechanics. Okay. So, you know, then we're going to look at, uh, Let's see here. So you see the nice follows. Look at the follow through difference, right? So on the left, I got a nice little follow through. On the right, it's it, it's it's not terrible, right? But it's shorter. That little that that little difference, right, causes one ball to go over the net by the paddle, and the other bar or the paddle laying down, and the other one to go into the net. That's the difference between winning and losing. Those little things are the difference between winning and losing. So. What we've done, what CJ and I, are, you know, have prepared and are going to continue to prepare are these types of, of, uh, of breakdowns to really help you hone in on the things that you need to do to improve your game. So, you see where the ball on the left clears easily and the ball on the right does not. So, and remember from when you saw the rally before, the shot on the, on the left, the one that cleared the net was very effective. It bounced, right? It forced the player to move over. Very effective shot. So, so that's what we're going to be doing. All right, let's see what happens here. It's like more exciting stuff. Look at that. Look at the height of those shots. Love those shots. No chance of hitting the net. Uh oh. We got the, not MVZ, right? But look at the lob, pushes them back. So who's in control now? Right? This side, right? They're in, oh, they're in so control. I mean, what, what's the other team going to do? They're dead, right? They're dead. Oh, no. Did the ball hit the net, CJ? Don't tell me the ball hit the net, CJ. That's not possible, right? So I have a team that's in trouble, right? They're going to go down, and I hit the net. Matt, point over, right? All right, one more. I think there's one more. And this is a similar thing, right? So you have, you have the return team on this side. We got our, our good friend Eddie and Webby on the other side in the black shirt, right? So I have a – I have a – I have a, a uh, put away, right? But what do I do with it? Freaking on, right into the net, right? Let that ball drop, go right into the net. Let the other team off the hook on a put away. No bueno when you do that. Oh, no. CJ, I don't know why I should show this one. This one hurts me. This one here, 13-13. One or two. One, I think. One. No, two. 13-13-2. We're going to one in a second. 13-13-2. They're playing at 15, right? This is for all the marbles. 
So we're going to see a serve here. Very nice. A return. Very nice. No, not into the net, right? 13, 13, 2. Can't happen, right? Can't happen. Now, I want to show you a contrast here. This is Ted on this side. His 13, 13, 2, right? What does he do? Ted Meyer is not going to let the net beat him, folks. He is not going to let the net beat him. Nope. No, no, net's not going to beat me. My ball's going to clear the net every time. Now look what he does. Look at that. He goes to the middle, and then the last, the, the last one here. Oh, look at that. Look at that clearance, right, for a winner. Beautiful. The net is not going to beat Ted Meyer. All right, here we go. So, you know, wait for um, the high balls, right, when you're going to attack. Wait for balls that are, that are above the net that you can attack. Increase margin for error. Uh, you know, something like a paddle laying down, a paddle standing up, it really depends on distance and things like that. But you want to give yourself some clearance. None of this, like, right over the net stuff. Uh, and attack from closer to the non-volley zone. Uh, it's better to clear the net. All right. So are we ready to go on number three? Let's roll it. Okay. All right, here we go. So this one is going to be fairly short. And here's why, guys and gals. Um, the net is a huge issue. Learning to, to let your opponent uh, make errors, huge issue. Just don't work on the sidelines. Seriously, forget about the sidelines. You don't need to hit balls to the sidelines. Now, if you're dinking cross court or something, that's fine. Give yourself a nice little two-foot cushion over there. But, you know, you got those putaways. Forget about it. Forget about the sidelines. They don't exist. Hit everything in the middle. It'll confuse your opponents. There's usually a hole there anyway. It's just a much better shot to hit the middle. Uh, and, and I will tell you this, from personal experience, having played this for four or five years, the middle solves a riddle almost every time. You just go down the middle. You got to put away, go down the middle. Forget the angle shots, guys. That's all I got on that one, CJ, because that one is, listen, you see the sidelines, just go, no, no, I don't want any part of you. I'm going to hit the middle. Wow. Tony was actually brief. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give him a second to get that video back up. But, you know, I just want to reiterate, he's not saying don't ever hit towards the sidelines. That's what he's not saying. Uh, you know, let's talk about three points and in three instances. Is number one, if you have the option to end the point and, and you have the option to end it in the middle, End it in the middle versus the sideline. You, you, you're giving yourself that margin of error that we have talked about. Um, in uh, two shots that we've talked a lot about and that we will continue to talk a lot about are the serve and the return. So when it comes to the serve and the return, there's, there's really no risk reward for going close to the lines on either side, the center line or the sideline on the serve or the return. Okay, so there, there's no, the risk reward just isn't there. And then option number three, when you are using the sidelines, in particular, I like to think of this one in uh, the cross court dink, right? Give yourself a two foot margin of error. Okay, so the more error that you can give yourself, the better off you're going to be. All right, Tony, you got some more video for us? Ready to roll. Let's do this thing. All right, so we're going to, secret number three is really play that middle, folks. So here we're going to look at the same match. This is 13-13-1 of the same match. Now, remember? So here, Jim, who's a good friend on the other side, hits his third shot here, right? But he just – no margin, right? That ball's out. So they go from 13-13-1 opportunity to a, a sideline out and a net play. No bueno. They lose 15-13 the next uh, serve rotation. No, no, don't say it's not so, CJ. There you go. Out of bounds on the sideline, right? Why? Why is that necessary? It doesn't add anything to the game, right? But I do, I'm going to, props, props to my player. That was the, that was a serve she just hit a minute ago. The return, sorry, she just hit a minute ago. This is her very next return of serve, guys. This is what you have to do. I, I, super kudos to her for doing this. Look at that. Mwah. That's magical. Magical, guys. That's what you got to do. You make a mistake, you fix it. You recalibrate. That's a beautiful return of serve right there. I'm going to put that in my next book, CJ. All right, here we go. So, so basically you want to, you want to stay away from the sidelines right here. We're going to see, I'm going to speed it up a little bit, CJ, to get to the good stuff. These folks are 70 plus. I just have nothing but respect. I want to be playing pickleball in 70. Okay. So we got the put away, right? Decent amount of court, right? Goes to the sideline, right? It's a tournament. Never know what that call is going to happen, right? It is called, oh, he is not happy. I must have been called out, CJ. The player on this side is not happy. So, don't – listen, I'm not saying that was out or in. I have no idea. But don't even make it to where that can happen, especially with all that space, right? That's what now, there, maybe he doesn't go middle, but he does the cushion that, that CJ mentioned, right? Two, three foot from the sideline, he wins that, that rally easy. Oh, no, not a serve. 
Look at that serve. What, what's the advantage of that serve, right? Other than going wide or potentially going wide, it was called out, right? So not necessary. All right. I think we got here another serve. Yep, playing with the sidelines. No bueno playing sidelines. Lose opportunities. We call those momentum killers, CJ, when we play tournaments. Those miss that serve, you know, you're on a run. Oh, look at – guys, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? There's another slide that CJ and I wanted to give you kind of a sneak peek, right? So this is the kind of like very specific information we're going to be providing to you. So here you see – this is on a return of serve, right? So this is a, a return of serve slide. So the margin of our return of serves – if, if, if uh, unless you're very, very comfortable with return of serves, if you had every single return of serve to that spot that I marked there for the next year, you're going to be perfectly fine. You're not going to lose any significant advantage in your game. And significant is a very important word, which we'll explain in the future. Um, so that's your target area, right? So these are the kind of slides that we're going to put together for you. Maximum margin for error there. You got 10 feet on each side, right? Then you got about four or five foot to the back from the middle of the target area. Okay. And it shows you it's, it's still deep enough, right? That's the, that, cause that's important. We would not tell you to serve short. So we're not going to give you a short target. We're going to require you to have some risk by putting it nearer to the baseline, right? About a four foot margin there. If you feel good, you can go three foot, go two foot. If you go shorter, closer than two foot, I think that's a mistake because you know, we're not robots, so let's not do that. But um, it's still deep enough, right? So these are the kind of – that's the kind of information that, we'll, that, that our modules at VI Pickleball contain and, and, and will give you. So um, basically, you know, as CJ said, finish down the middle. Avoid sidelines on serves and returns to serve is not necessary. And give yourself a two-foot margin on other shots so you, there's not that close call that – who knows? All righty. There we go. Awesome. I mean, and again, like Tony, respect the out of bounds, respect the sidelines. I mean, if you're hitting towards those sidelines, give yourself that two foot margin of error, like we're talking about, because we are, we are going to make mistakes. I mean, that is going to happen. Again, the question is, can we find the places to um, minimize the amount of mistakes we make? And as Tony said, and I'm sure you've heard this multiple, multiple times on the pickleball courts, and, and, and this is actually some pretty good advice. <laughs> you hear a lot of bad stuff, but down the middle solves the riddle. This webinar is part of the VI Pickleball Experience. At the end of the day, right, you know, why do we put these three secrets together for you, right? Uh, and again, there's kind of a brainy kind of a thing this time, but we put them together for you because pickleball is about reducing errors at the end of the day, right? Benchmark 4.0 players. So 4.0 players that are really, really good make less errors than their opponents. That's how they win, right? So, you know, I'm going to state it differently, right? You cannot be a benchmark 4.0 player if your play is error prone. So error reduction as you've seen from the slides and everything we're talking about, error reduction requires focus improvement, right? It means that you're not chasing down every new shiny technique or shot that comes across a computer screen, right? Or whatever. So CJ and I, we designed VI Pickleball, right? To do just this. VI Pickleball is designed for maximum pickleball improvement. And so that leaves a question that we have for you, which I'll have in a second which is, would you like us to teach you how to take control of your game, gain confidence, and become the player that you want to be? So kind of at this point in time, you know, you've, you've got a couple options. I mean, you can try to keep improving on your own without a plan, but you're probably going to run the risk of being stuck in the same place this time next year, making those same mistakes that we're talking about today. Or a second option is you can 100% commit to improving your game in a community with Tony and I that's designed to get your questions answered and to help you every step of the way. If it sounds like option number two is for you, we'd like you to invite you to VI Pickleball. And this is, this is really uh, the really the way CJ and I visualize, or not visualize, envision this thing, which is VI Pickleball is the only immersive, and that's a really important term, immersive training community of its kind that teaches you techniques and strategies to create a clear path to success. And, you know, what we're going to focus on in there is we're going to focus on helping you understand the best strategy for the situation, learning how to apply tactics at the appropriate time. That's really important. Becoming proactive versus reactive when you're on the court creating reliable shots, all of them, including obviously the third drop shot, the third shot drops, <laughs> third drop shot. And then ultimately, right, improving your pickleball fitness. 
So here is what Ernie had to say about his learning experience. He said, yesterday I played with three 4.0 guys and held up my end. I averaged four soft shots per game, winning points on each of them. I'm still having difficulty resetting the point. That's a tough one, Ernie. But once the volley start, but now I know what to do. So thanks for helping me change my game. For more information on VI Pickleball, check out wearepickleball.com. You're going to want to be a part of this community.